internationally renowned gentlemen of leisure. Is, is that what they call it, man? Superfly reincarnated. <laughs> All around the world, really global. Rody Mack, what's happening with you, bro? Hey, down and around, active and still activated, Jack. Yeah, man, so let me ask you this, man. And we gonna call you a gentleman of leisure for that's, all extent, intensive purposes. That's the truth of the matter, Jack. Yeah, are there any other titles? Rose Royce Rody, World what? Tokyo Rody and Mac, you know, and it goes on and on, man. Mac man. Yeah, man, let me ask you this, man. When did you really jump off the porch with everything? Oh, about 15, 16, got some exposure to it. By 16, 17, I had knowledge to, you know, move and groove and stay up under the OGs that was down and around. Mm -hmm. And it put me under their wings, man, and I was absorbing, sucking it up. And, hey, man, here I am today, the master of the game. Master of the game, man. Now, you know, I met you through one of our good friends, man. Shout out to my guy over at Gully TV. Gully TV, he had, yeah. He had, you know, yeah. When I would, you know, when I got finished doing my interview with him, he had told me, he said, man, you got to talk to Rody Mack, man. He, he was telling me, I said, man, ain't nobody like that for real, man, for real. Right, 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 And right. so when he told, when I met you, I said, okay, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, really we, going down, I guess. Yeah, we came down by the hotel, and you saw that Rolls Royce sitting outside, man, and it was on, man. It was like, oh, this is who you talking about. Yeah, I was on deck waiting for my partner, man, you know. Had to see he was in the cash county, because ain't nothing lost about me around this Los Angeles. I feel you, man. You did. <laughs> I feel you, man. So, from there, when you say OT, you mean out of town, right? OT out of town, OC out the country, man. It's bigger than OT now with me. Well, well, let's talk about nationally first, you know, just the internal thing. So, you pretty much travel state to state, or do you have designated places that you go? Well, major events is what allowed me to move around, man. Super Bowl, Mardi Gras, World Series, Final Four, NS 500, Kentucky Derby. That allowed me to move around like a gypsy, man. Okay, so you pretty much following all the major events then. Major events going to have you on some major activities, man. You need all the stars coming out for the major fun, man. That's Showtime nice. at the Lakers game. Pat Riley sitting, uh, Pat Riley, uh, 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 Jack Nicholson, they at courtside, man. You want to be around them folks, man. Back you in be the at courtside? Man, courtside, 50-yard right? line, man. The bleachers, man, wherever I can slip. BET Award, man, in the orchestra area, man. Cameraman don't let up off me when he see me. No famous players in here amongst all the, y'all favorite stars. But no, right. we need to know who these famous players is. Right. Minister Seymour, Don Juan, Rodeo Mack, man. Yeah, we up in here representing for the church. I man. see Don Juan everywhere. Yeah, 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 you know. He he upholding, I mean, he gave us a platform in the game, man. You know? So is, is it different levels to this? Oh, super levels. Many levels, like playing Pac-Man. You know, you start right. off with that one, then it's down, and then you get a new board, you get a new board, you get, and then all of a sudden you... You, uh, you crap out, then you put your quarterback in and you start over. Try to beat the last score you had. So that would be the same scenario with life, man. Right. You go to jail, come back home, bam, start all over again. You ain't come on with nothing. But when you left, you had all your toys. The bitch gone, the money gone, the jewelry gone, and da-da-da. So what you got to do? You got to get, get back, back down. Right. You got to get back down. Now you moved a little further than what you had the last time. I said, damn, oh, it wasn't meant for me to have that for that length of time. Mm -hmm. Now you come up with the new toys, and it's better than the last. So he said, okay, I accept that, Lord. Now let me ask you, now what year was it when you first started? Like when you first started doing your thing? 79. 79. So yeah. it was significantly different back then. Oh, man, it was straight streets, man. Straight Manually. Manually. Um, you had to come out the house for all transactions. Is that, is that right now? How did you um, recruit these potential people? Or did they come to you? Oh, they come to me. They see me in traffic. Young flat kid moving and grooving in traffic. And first one spoke is the first one broke behavior is what I had. And if you want to be with me, you got to hand over the fee. Because I got some gain that I execute for myself. And I know if I can pay myself. 
Baby, you got to pay me just as well. I heard that. <laughs> you got to pay me because I can't have you around me just doing nothing. Right. And I got 26 letters in the alphabet, a game that I can hand over to you and send you somewhere to go get it. Are you down? I'm down. Well, let's go, baby. Straight to the top. Okay, now, um, me and you was talking a little bit earlier before, you know, the show started, and you told me that you preferred to keep your stable kind of low, like you didn't want a whole bunch of um, extra no, attention. No, I didn't need the eight and the nines and the ten. I need the one or the two that's going to take care of some grand theft activity, man, that's going to make me look like I got ten or fifteen. One or two, that's like the top, the top of the top of the pick. They they the baddest the baddest ones. If you got two, they got to be worth something. Thorough ones. You feel mm -hmm. me? They got to be your 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 thorough ones, like you say. They got to be the ones that really seen really about get you. out there and get it. Now I know a few pimps and players. Yeah. You know, in my days, um, Kenny Red, I was telling you about. Yeah. You know, my not general. Yeah, I mean. I see those guys making money, but when you see it today, you see these little young boys out there trying to do it. And, you know, these little cats is getting charged up the yin-yang, getting caught doing what they're doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they're messing with and bringing in young girls, underage females. So the game is totally different from... Well, back in the day, they were still doing it, the same thing, messing with young girls. Yeah. But at the same time, the law wasn't being executed at that time. Right. But a lot of exposure been put on the game now. So now we're going to target this new generation that try to execute that behavior. Right. And we knocking y'all out the ballpark like Reggie Jackson at the World Series. <laughs> and they gone. So that brings that bring structure back to the to the real shit. Yeah. Okay. So now the understanding of the game is, man, if you really want to get in, be a part of that life, you got to be ready to s accept their consequences. Right. Because now the act has been committed. And if she want to break bad on any given moment, they can do a Bill Cosby move. Right. And pull back old history and say, boom, the act has been committed. Right. Mm. You know, Mentioned this some earlier, man. We talk about the um, underage, the underage kids. Uh, I feel really strongly about that, you know. Um, and I believe um, if you find out a girl, have you ever like ran across a girl that was just you knew was too young and, and kind of like you know you pick a fish up out the water, you catch a small fish and you just yeah. throw it back. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Negative. Because the activity that I was participating in, you had to be up of age. You had to be bright at the mind. It wasn't just the flesh that I was moving and selling. Man, I was moving the brain. Where you can literally go in the FDIC bank in America and get tens and twenty thousands of dollars. Now, that's cold game, Jack. Okay, so from what I understand, what you're saying, it's more like a racket to you. It ain't just about the bed. No, man. No, Jack. But that's the way it's they about, think today. It's about the character with the program, with the blueprint. If you don't have a blueprint like Rody Mac Game, then you got to subject yourself to that behavior. <laughs> but I don't have to only subject myself to that behavior because I got Rody Mac Game. 26 letters in the alphabet, I got a game mm -hmm. for every letter. Okay. That whole pick cans out the garbage, I got a place where she can get over a million cans that might get her $10,000. So just all kind of stuff. Just yeah. like, what makes a woman, what makes a woman choose to partake in that activity? Well, some of them, is in that lifestyle already. Mm -hmm. Coming from broken home, you just happen to be in traffic and saw that accident and you got down on her. And that's how y'all connected. Right. But to just go straight, you hunting and you going to some schoolhouse, young uh, grammar school, trying to convince a little girl, here go a lollipop or a freeze pop, you dig know what I'm saying? Come on, get with me. 
This mm-hmm. is a little kid. You offer her a lollipop and a freeze pop, a kid is not going to turn that down. Right. They parents can't even get that to him. So, yeah, she's going to reach for it. You're dead wrong, homie. <laughs> now go talk to that grown broad over there, man, and see if you can tell her about getting you some Rolls Royce and Rolexes. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. You know, but what they did do with the game, uh, they pretty much what they call white slavery. Yeah. Yeah, white slavery, uh, uh, transporting. Yeah, human human yeah. trafficking. Oh, now it's human trafficking. Yeah, when they threw that human trafficking and that stuff, it, oh, they it got serious. I know a couple of cats in jail right now for it. And see, the cool thing about it is they be having these young girls, right? Mm-hmm. And when the young girl get caught, she give up her, her her daddy. She give up the whole information. You know what I'm saying? Because what the act has been committed. Right. She know a lot, so they can squeeze blood out of her. And they let her go. They gonna use you. You ain't gonna ever see your baby again. They gonna use you. Ain't gonna see your mom again. Now the crocodile tears is coming out of her eyes. And they don't want her. They want the pimp. They want the male. They want the individual that's executing these behaviors. Mm. So these guys got to be mindful of that. See, I'm so seasoned today, I don't even want that kind of action. Mm. Now let's talk about this, man. We know you um, pretty much said that you follow all the major events, the major goings on of yeah. popular culture. Yeah. You there. Yeah. So, but it's a different level to you. You also hit... You also hit, you also travel out the country. Yeah, foreign countries. I stepped my game up, man. You know, because I done ran around America for like 35, 40 years. And I'm like a dog chasing after his tail. And hey, man, I ain't going nowhere. I done built the whole hole that I'm going down instead of up. So now <laughs> I stretch my arm out and I start flying worldwide. <laughs> oh, now I'm seeing some different elements of the game. Right. Now. Mm-hmm. now it's a beautiful look. What countries have you hit so far? Well, I started in England, London, 2014. I got my passport. I had my first one in 2000, but 10 years went by so fast, I was procrastinating on my movement. Mm-hmm. And then when I looked up, man, it was 10 years later, I said, man, I got the sign working this passport. I went and got it renewed. 2014, my first trip out of the United States. But prior to that, I went to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. In 1983 for New Year's Eve. So that was the first time I ever went out of USA to Hawaii. But then after I did London, I come back in 2015, I go to Amsterdam. Now my mind is abroading. Now mm-hmm. my knowledge is been expanding. It's no longer thinking local game no more. It's really international, dealing with Interpol and all this here, dealing with customs. So now you got to be extra swift, but you won't see America no more. Huh? Yeah, right. now, let me ask you this now. I assume that it's a little bit different over there. Yeah. How does one proceed to knock abroad on, on a foreign land? Well, you being you, and you being around the action again, the same behavior you did, I did in America. I'm doing on foreign foreign soil, staying sharp, moving and grooving, high and bind, waving, smiling, hee hee ha ha. And we are liked in foreign countries, so we got action like Janet Jackson. I was going to say that. As soon as they see him and see how he walk and how he talk, they own him. And if he smooth like that, they it's love enough. him. I'm telling you how it is, man. They love that. I go in Thailand. I can't even go in my pocket in Thailand. Bangkok, Pattaya, I can't go in my pocket. They just give, give, give. I said, oh my God, this is what the South used to be like in America. You can't go on the South now and find this behavior. Oh, Sonny, what you want? Sonny, you want it? Before, yes. The generosity in the South is still in Asia. Yeah. But when they come over here, they change their behavior. But if if you step on their soil, mm-hmm. yeah, you the king that you really is, man. 
All right. Now, now, what happens to them girls, man? What happens to them women? Because I'm wondering. I assume you stay over there a certain amount of time. To yeah, get, yeah. Then I get bounce. 90 days over there because, you know, I'm I'm on a visa, so I'm only allowed to stay a certain time. I'm in the process now trying to get dual citizenship, so I ain't got to come back to America unless I want to. They got soldier boys over there that inspired me. I ain't got to never go to America again in life. I'm getting government money coming through the bank, direct deposit. America ain't got to never see me again. I said, ooh, home, that's the behavior I want, man. I want to go back to America because I want to go, not because my visa's up in 30, 60, 90 days. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> once you're over there and you leave, those women just become free agents again? Well, they got to be free because I ain't there. Mm -hmm. But when you but touch back. But I'm still in contact with them when I get to America. Okay, I got you. So, yeah. so they still, they still. Social media is strong. That uh, uh, WhatsApp and, and and all them international phones is on. They strong. So you pretty much, man, you got the whole thing laid out to where they still peeling yours off. You know, the feed. The feed well, the money's so short over there, it ain't gonna make it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's short. They got to come to America to really reach it, that loan money. So the lip money that they get over there is extremely short. Now, when we talk about finances over there, what's extremely short in the average night? Oh, my God. If they get a $1,000 bot, they only got $90. Yeah, $1,000. Mm -hmm. No, they got $30. Is that right? So if I took that $1,000 money and bought it back to America, mm -hmm. you only gave me $30. Oh, the exchange rate was hitting you. You only gave me $30. But yeah. I'm pretty sure when you was in England, <clears throat> because the exchange rate with the euro, um, with the euro, with the, um, the pound, the English pound, pound. Yeah, the British pound, yeah, and the dollar, it's up there. At one time, man, they stuff was almost like, I remember back in 2005, it was almost like, like a three to one or something like that, man. Man, England do not respect the American dollar. <clears throat> not at all. I I learned that firsthand. Now I do know America is the daughter of England. Mm -hmm. Because, see, England is aware that that crew that came out of England and created this American dollar mm -hmm. came from that stock. So when you try to bring that dollar into England, we only giving you uh, $7.00. We only give you seven dollars for that hundred dollar bill, cause our highest denomination is fifty pounds. So I'm giving you fifty seven pounds when you cash in that hundred dollars. Pretty much. <laughs> I'm giving you seven dollars. Wait a minute. That show you they don't respect America. Now, did you ever have any problems with the local um with the local gentlemen of leisure out there? No, man. They took to me like duck the water, man, because, I mean, it ain't what you do, it's how you do it. Yeah, I didn't step on nobody's toes. I came through, breathed through, showed up, hee hee, ha ha. We liked all around the world, man. Oh, so you wasn't going out there with mentality of just knocking another player's um another, another player's piece? No, it ain't it ain't in my program. The brawl got to knock me, man. I'm so doing my job showing up to come up. Pretty much choosing. Yes. So choosing is the right way to go. The proper way to go. Right. That means I don't want to see you eat to me. Mm -hmm. If you got a brawl, I don't care if she is doing it. But you don't, I don't want to see you eat if I try to mash on you for your brawl. Right. So in... On the flip side, that can happen to me. Oh, what's happening, man? You don't want to see me eat, man? You know I'm down on the brawl, man. Man, I can do more with the brawl than you can. Man, whatever I'm doing with it, it's my business. Mm -hmm. So that means you don't want to see me eat. You don't want to see me happy. You don't want to see me with the brawl. Now, let me ask you this, man. A lot of movies on uh, rappers... They paint the pimp game as just this real, just um, immaculate thing that's going on, like it's just all good all the time. Yeah. It's a lot of dangerous components to it. It's very much. If you look at the social media today, they got one rapper that just went to jail. See, I don't know the conduct that they are doing. I don't even see them in the streets. I don't even know what it is. 
But next time I look up, they make a headline that they was harboring some broads, got them locked in out. I don't know where they was at. Right. Opposed to back in the days, we knew where everybody was at and what everybody was doing. We knew all the players that was in traffic, been in corners, from mm -hmm. New York to California to Hawaii to Miami to Chicago. We knew the information. So for the ECAS to be running to the problem they run in today, mm -hmm. I tell them I'm the truth for the youth, man. I'm going to show you how to stay out of the penitentiary. I'm going to show you how to duck child support. I'm going to show you how to be able to move and groove around the world. <laughs> I heard that, man. In the streets, they got speed bumps to slow you down when you coming through them residents, don't you? Yeah. Because some residents is just straight blank and the car goes straight through. But them speed bumps are there for a reason, to slow you down. Now you got a chance to think. Well, that's kind of hard because with the R. Kelly, Bill Cosby controversy and shit, it's hard to do what you're doing because anytime you get caught up with a woman, especially beating up on one, mm -hmm. you going you going to prison. Yeah, especially nowadays because they just really O.J. Simpson, can... his incident enhances us to go to jail. Yeah. His incident. Before we used to scream and holler at a brawl in front of the police, he going to say, you go your way, you going <laughs> to... You raise your voice now, you're going in. Yeah, you're going in any type. And they almost have to nowadays because people are so litigious and, and so into litigation that if they don't, if a police see two people arguing, if a police, if I'm a police officer and I see a couple over there arguing and a dude kind of acting aggressive towards it, and I say it ain't nothing, it's just a couple having an argument, I go about my business. Yeah. And he messed around and slapped the broad. Her head hit the ground and she dead. It's over. They go to the police department. They go say, y'all saw him right. threatening that they woman called, and y'all didn't do nothing. Y'all came out to the answer and you let it happen and then you leave. Now you got to come back again. Now, we had a call the first time. Mm -hmm. So they got to protect themselves in that behavior. So what happened with me, when, see, I was wise enough to see all the chess moves that were being played when I seen that. Been a couple of times I've been in jail. There's cats in jail for domestic violence. Just cause the chick called, this is your old lady. She called the police on you. They come and you get arrested. I peep game. I know of a couple of chicks who hid. I used to cut off that was mine. Just for saying stupid shit, doing stupid shit. Mm -hmm. So I had to recondition my whole p pattern. Because I cannot see going down on no domestic violence, man. But at the end of the day, how do you keep control? Because if she know you ain't going to put your hands on her, how do you keep control? I keep control by hand picking who really need to be around me. Right. Okay. And then in the process of you got to keep nitpicking. And I'm by myself, darling. I don't you know. This. I get money just as well, baby. I keep telling you that. Right. You need me like America needs a president. I don't need it, but for one thing, the birth kids for me, that's it, that's all. There's other activities, just extra brawls around me. I got them going to do this, going to do that. But when they start liking me, then that's when I start seeing your mission. I don't have to force you to go do nothing. I got Rody my game for real. 26 <laughs> letters in the alphabet of it. You did <laughs> Now, now, how many children do you have? I got three kids. Three kids. Three. One boy, two girls. Okay, so you got daughters. Yeah, I got one daughter. Super stop in New York. By your girls? Yeah, one of my girls. Okay. Oh, it's one of them. All of them by one? Oh, three different girls. Three different girls? Three different girls. I'm talking about the ones that work for you? Yeah. Okay. See, the thing about my girl, like I say, they wasn't flatbackers. See, I didn't never get into dating and following flatbackers by flatbackers. Mm -hmm. Mine was major crooks for real. Patty Hearst type shit. Explain uh, flatbackers. Well, flatbackers is a girl that turned dates, have sex for money. Oh, okay. I had them, but I didn't follow no kids by none of them. Right. I they see that a there. lot. They wasn't there for the purpose of me having sex with them, too. No, if you ain't going to hand over the money and keep turning a date, then that's, I don't need the sex. You're doing enough sex in the street. <laughs> that's enough to make you run off, then run off. 
because that don't that don't fit my criteria for me to be second you to keep you. Remember, I got game just as well, baby. When you gone, Rody McMahon hit the concrete just as well. Lames and Dames do play Rody Mac game. Remember that. Yeah, they do. Now them ones that would stand on their feet, they was a different element. Yeah, they was different. Element. So it felt all right to engage with them because sex was not dirty coming from you. It was right. clean. Let me ask you this. Have you ever felt bad for doing what you do? Negative. Okay. Became a lifestyle for me. And I was able to carve it in a vision, in a way where it suits me, not nobody else. Right. All my getting busted, going to jail and all that, that got narrowed down to it's at zero now. But in the early part, it was two times a year. It would go lay on the bed. It would come on. And now it's narrowed down to zero. Now I can enjoy driving Rolls Royces and riding up down Sunset and Hollywood Boulevard, taking trips out of foreign countries. Because I mastered the game now. It ain't what you do, it's how you do it. I ain't <laughs> trying to get in nobody's business, nobody's activity, but Brody Max activity. Right. I heard that, man. Now, you mentioned that you got a daughter, right? Yeah. And she knows about your lifestyle, evidently, right? Yeah. If she chose one day and said, Daddy, I want to jump into the game, whether as a madam, it ain't got to be necessarily nothing else. Yeah. Whether it be as a madam, because you got plenty, you got female pimps, too. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But you got female pimps, too. If she did that, what would be your advice to her? Or would you tell her not to get involved? Well, I would tell her, I mean, you for the truth. And I would give her the guidelines that her mother went by. And her mother was strong just as well. Cats had to have bank to want to even say you know, hello to her. But I know she wasn't taking that lick. But she knew how to go get some money. So I would show her that guideline because I have a guideline to show her. And when you ain't got no guideline, then you just got to go freestyle. I, I think it's, it's different. I wouldn't have or allow my daughter to follow my lifestyle. You see what I'm saying? Because it might be different for her. You know what I'm saying? But she's like, not like me. I'm not allowing her to follow it, but she's getting in this activity because in this generation, they're doing things totally different than my era. Right. So the only thing I can do is give her the guidelines that her mother had to be able to show you got to be stand up. You got to be down for your people. Right. If you're going to be about it, because you can't keep, you know, dipping and dabbing, jumping ship, you know, choosy, soothing in. Your mother wasn't like that. Right. When she had a man, she had a man. And she took care of her business. So, you know, with the daughter being, you know, where she at now, she's a good mother. She take care of her kids. She got three grandkids for me. And I'm happy how she turned out. So it's cool. So pretty much, what does um, what does one do when they are a gentleman of leisure? Like, do you just hang around other gentlemen of leisure? Do you just are you or are you consumed by the game just twenty four seven? Well, birds and feathers do flock together, man. You know, I got some elderly that really, you know, still is eighties in their eighties, and have overcome the from the bottom of this. Phil Mo Slim, Ray Verge, the Grand Master, Bishop Don Magic Wan, Simo. They shaped the game with fashion that one can still be able to participate and stay sharp on the bitch. <laughs> now, if she want to come and choose, then, hey, man, you got action at it. But we don't have to go look for y'all no more. Y'all know our name. Our name is out there. No, have you ever um, had a square woman? Like I'm talking about a woman that work in the bank, or in the, from the, in the grocery store, or work, no. you know what I'm saying, the cashier. Have you ever had one of them try Negative. to? Negative. Never. Negative. They didn't fit my program. You talking about man when I was 16, 18, running wild, running strong, daily in the streets. 
criminal activity daily. My square woman couldn't do that. So she couldn't work, be professional in the day and, and, it was, it, and work the street in We're talking the early 80s, man. Right. It was fast. It was faster than now. Real cats in the early 80s wasn't even trying to hear nothing the square chick had to say. Man, we just came out of Nixon era where plenty of money was in the street. Jimmy Carter followed later. By the time it got to Bush, the cocaine era hit the street. We had three generations of the streets being filled with money, man. Now, how did um, how did um, the dope gang in the '80s, you know, crack epidemic and all that? Yeah. How did that affect your 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 economy back then? Oh well, it was uh, it broke down a whole bunch of shot, uh, star players, man. It broke a whole bunch of now. Cats that was really, you know, up on their game, they hit that motherfucker pipe. And it was all she wrote. I went through it right after Richard Pryor had did it. Mm -hmm. So I was in the free base era. I don't know nothing about crack. I know about free base. You got the white powder. You cook it up yourself to eat it. And you watch it came back yourself. You didn't get no piece of object from somebody and they tell you it's cracking, it can be some sheep rock. Now you mad as all I do. So that only lasted for a minute. That's how I got to Hawaii, because I was running from the drug use. Mm -hmm. And I knew I didn't come to New York City to be no drug. So you pretty much cleaned yourself out there. I self-cleaned myself, man. I was laying on Rackers Island one day, screaming, pimping to the top of my lungs. And a cat just happened to try to tell you was roasting me. He said, man, I break you and your bro. I was nice enough to say, man, how you break me and my bro? I'm interested. He said, when you take the money from your bro, right? Mm -hmm. Then you come to me and buy the dope, right? Mm -hmm. I just broke both of y'all. He ain't lying. I fell back and I said, oh shit, I didn't come to New York for no nigga to break me. I know that cat wish he never, but he thought I was probably going to rah, rah, rah up at him. Mm -hmm. I'm in jail. I ain't got time to be rah, rah. I'm trying to play for the dough, not the flow, man. So I sucked that in. I said, man, you won't get me to use drugs again in life. If that's the mentality that's on your behavior, on your side of the game. Mm -hmm. You breaking us, pimp niggas, players, and hoes, and all y'all got to do is sit in the ghetto and wait till us come to y'all. It's over. Yeah, she, she's selling and he getting paid because all of them, like Long Beach Boulevard, yeah. that's all they all did, get high, get high. They was working for the high. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and, the, and the players, the key players, was getting high. So that's why you stay stuck, stagnated where you at, Long Beach Boulevard. Yeah. Looking raggedy. You know what I'm saying? You had those females that was high as a motherfucker and come out with some show pants on and one time would gap them up because they already know what they're out there for. You know what I'm saying? Which Las Vegas is totally different because when you see a lady, she in a casino working. She ain't walking the streets. Right, right. She in the casino. So the only way they get them is if they profile them. When you walk through that door, they already got a picture of you. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's how they tell it's you. recognition. Yeah, they tell you to go on and bounce. But other than that, they make so much money in there because they looking like grown-ass women. They dressed up. They ain't out there with their hair in a ponytail, ponytail tilted to the side and shit. Right, the heels turned to the side. They, they good to go. They even have a a, a schedule. Uh, uh, anything that happened in Las Vegas, like the NFL drafts this weekend, mm -hmm. weekend just passed, they all out. Like you push the red button and everybody know because there's so many people going to be out there. And that's their weekend. They make money. They make money. Some of them don't have a, 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 a pimp. Some of them do. But Ray the ones Ray, that do... Sponsors. Shh, I know some cats out there, man, got some nice-ass houses just because of pussy. Nice houses. No, the commodity is, I mean, the commodity is well if they're executing it right, man. You know, but like I say, in this day and time, 
the act is committed. Right. If that bra was to flip, man, that's going to be the worst evil came upon you that you didn't recognize the act was committed. This going to hold whenever she feel like telling. So you had a, you just, like, um, really taught me something right now during this episode, man, because I thought, you know, when you say the term flatbackers, I thought that's what the whole thing was. But he tell, he's saying that's not his thing. Mm-mm. No, I'm bigger than flatbackers, man. Flatbackers can only get a certain amount of money, man. I damn they could put you on a lick that you might can bring me a suitcase of money back. So are, are you kind of like Charlie Angel's boss then? He he networking. I'm like uh, I'm like what Goldie had in the Mac, man. Them brawls put dude in the bathtub. When he came back out, he was screaming and hollering. The lick is gone, Joe. Mm-hmm. You give him that illusion that he was going to get some flush. But go clean yourself up first, daddy So when you can work from that angle, you popping game. You're not really watching this bro go through the, from, uh, uh, the format of doing this and then come and getting you $60, $80, one $120. So you playing a long game there. It's a long game for a long player, man. Let me ask you this, man. I know you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. What's the most you don't ever pull in in one day? 30. That ain't a bad day. No, it ain't a bad day, man, when you got your plan locked down. And like I, I say, that ain't come from flatbacking. It ain't come from flatbacking at all. Because that, I know flatbacking could not get that. I know that. And I'm and I put my life on it. Can't no cat in the game. Say they brought went and did a thirty thousand dollar flat back. And what's the average daily like? What's the average daily um, pickup on? Back in the days, it was a dime. But see, we're in a technology world now, so you know it's skyrocketing now. But then again, I say flat backing. So flat backing is. You think I'm finna set a brawl down on Figueroa? You think I'm finna set a brawl down on, on, on Western? $10 a tray. Maybe Long 25 Boulevard, In a scenario of nothing but Mexican and black. And I'm Rody Mac. No, that ain't Rody. That's not Rody. Them not Rody Mac's blade, Jack. Rudy Mac on wealthy blades, man. Around banks, downtown. <laughs> now you know when I when I hear most Corporate, um, when I hear most pimps talk, I usually hear them talk about somebody that kind of helped them get into the game. Who was your main influence? Like who was your mentor? Well, like I said, I come up in the life of being around game. So when they hit me in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Look out for yourself first. So we're going to lace you up with some game. We're going to teach you how to play the shots. We're going to teach you how to pickpocket. We're going to teach you how to drag. We're going to teach you how to Murphy. We're going to teach you how to short chain, red card, three top. Man, all them little turn. what's a Murphy? That's a con. Then the trick thing, he got that the, the girl is upstairs. Leave all your jewelry and stuff down. Some old got fast hands. They like to steal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So leave that in the envelope, man. It's going to be at the desk with your name on it. Boom. Go up on the eighth floor. <laughs> he come back, you gone. <laughs> and then, <laughs> the, a Murphy. We was the, able to capitalize off his weakness. Mm-hmm. Right. Because we see you seeking. Girl, 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 Chinese, Asian, black, white, next show in 30 minutes. Oh, what's that guy? No, we got the girls, they getting prepared to go on. Where do I go? Show them the flyer, bang, go to the eighth flow. Oh, man, you got to put that jewelry and money in this here because, you know, them girls, can, we're not responsible for that. So we're going to leave that at the desk. Murphy. No, you said something before about a red door, a red card. What is it? Red card. 
What's a red card? Now you see it, now you don't. Black and black, you lose, red, you win. Same move they did in the MAC. The MAC elaborated a whole bunch of games when I was 16 years old. Right. Them games still exist today. That's cold. The Murphy, man, that's some cold stuff. I, just would, I would love to see the look on them motherfuckers' faces man, when they come back downstairs. Well you, well, you know, like the game said, and I live off that, it's a sucker born every day. So I wake up to look for that sucker every day because the game ain't failed me yet by that being true. That's why I stick and move. Because <laughs> somewhere around this globe, there's a sucker that can be... That's real shit, though. I, 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 I've been around it. I, I know. I've been around it. And it's a cold game. And you just got to trip off of the the guys that that's in it for real. Because if you ain't in it for real, you're going to stay like this. You're going to be beating up them women. You, you're just disrespectful. You're not acting like a man in a real game. Hmm. And that's, that's one of the problems that they have today. Out here with these young cats, out here so-called they self doing this and doing that. They ain't ready for that. They just picking it up because... They seen the, the videos. They is seen the videos. Yeah. They seen the videos. They getting a little change, but they only doing it, and they getting high. They making the money and getting high. They not taking it and investing their money, like some of the cats I know. You know what I'm saying? There's some cats out there living wealthy, like for real, wealthy, because it's a business to them. You know what I'm saying? Most cats don't look at it like that. No, they on their first round. That's why I tell them I'm the truth for the youth. I can't, I can let you go ahead and go through your trials and error, but I can show you by example. If Do you, you stay in this game long enough, young fella, mm -hmm. you're using drugs now. At some point, you may overcome it. But drugs is for the youth, but it's not for the youth. But the youth is the victim more so that it's going to attack than a cat that's 60 years old that can live I lived through that era. Really. I was in Amsterdam. Everybody offered me weed. My response, I'm too young to smoke. I'm back a virgin now. I'm back an inference mentally because I done overcame what I do know. So you can't tell me what weed going to make me feel like. I already know to make me. And with all the new product they got out, I'm not fascinated to nobody. Right. Because what? It's going to take me back to that same scenario of use. I'm drug free. I've been drug free for about 25 years now. I met my best because I know the average player that's in the game is on drugs. Mm -hmm. But player, the drugs is not for a player. When I was a young youngster, I didn't know that. Being I'm seasoned, I'm able to tell a player. Drugs is not for the player. You a victim to some poison, and you trying to make it look fly. But it go down Skid Row. He using the same drug. Eventually, you going to make it to Skid Row like home. Because in my days, it was either drugs or luxury. Hey, man, give me luxury then, Jack. Y'all can have the drugs. You had to choose drugs and luxury. Right. Now I'm living a life of luxury. Because I ain't spent a penny on drugs in almost 35 years. That's a beautiful thing, man. That's a beautiful thing. That's you know, a strong point just as well. Now, what do you think about these cats out here today, man? Because I see... The thing I noticed now today about Pence, you used to always be able to separate. Like, if you saw a player back in the day... You knew they was a player. Yeah. Now you can't tell the difference. Kind of, it's like it's kind of different now. What do you think about these cats today? That's why I say the lingo may try to catch you. Hey, P, what's that? P, huh? P, huh? But your attire not matching up. So if your attire not matching up, you could have got me with your attire. Because I know one really got to stay suited and booty like I am today. In order to really be official like a referee with a whistle. 
But if you every day you see him play, he in sneakers and ding, uh, a dungarees. But you ain't got the whole scenario of some cat. It's not the close of the game. Well, no, bro. Seriously, go look back at the footages. Them outfits make statements. You got on Louis Gucci and that. That's not the pimping, man. That's name brand. You marketing somebody else. But when you suited and booted, man, and choked up, man, you able to go on Wall Street and get around big financial institution. Oh, man, we thugging. We can get in. But, man, have some discipline about your right. behavior. Right. Yeah, you can go in there acting all rah-rah and ghetto and everything, but don't spook the people, man. At least get a chance to get up on them. Oh, we knew we shouldn't let look at had sneakers on. That's why they do them people like that in the club. Mm -hmm. No sneakers. Have to have a collar shirt on. Some cat try to come there with a shirt on like you no collar on and try to get in the club. Home, you can't get in. We don't need that in here, man. That's a statement. You ain't a gentleman. Because you can't want to go out on the town on a nightlife and you ain't got a collar shirt on, man. At least a collar shirt. So now you got to go find a little ghetto joint. Right. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. And, and um, one thing I wanted to clarify with you, by you having the philosophy that you had in your business in the time period you came in the game, because you had two things in the 80s. You had um, crack epidemic and you had AIDS. Yeah. AIDS is a major thing. How how, how, how much did AIDS impact the, the industry for the guys that was dealing with the flatbackers? It was suicidal, man. It was suicidal. You sending a brown out of the literally flatback, and do you trust that she's some trick going to give us some money to not use the rubber, bareback, and all that, and then you go follow behind her? That's suicidal. The spirit of truth watched over me uh, many a time, I ran into this chick so fucking fine, drop dead gorgeous. And she was respectful enough to tell me, I know you probably want to sex me, but I got the virus. Nah, bitch, you just open a pocketbook, eight, nine different kind of drugs. And what year, what, what year was this? This is, uh... 86, 87. I said, darling, I thank you for being honest. And I stayed friends with her because I wanted to watch her conditions and how this really moved because the AIDS epidemic was there. But this girl was drop dead gorgeous. Didn't show no signs of it. Mm. But the medication she showed me in her purse. Yeah, I had a cousin that died of AIDS, man. That's like, that stuff used to scare the hell out of me, man. But I, th to. I thank you. No, I, I don't thank have to be scared. I'm oh, married. Oh, there now. It's over. It's been gone. I'm married. I, it's AIDS gone. ain't been gone. It's gone. No. Man, AIDS is gone. Las Vegas, not in Vegas, is not. No, AIDS is still very prevalent, man. Man. I ain't heard of AIDS. I ain't heard of patients. I seen some of my partners die from AIDS. Well, you know, the thing is, people aren't dying from it like they used to. Yeah. You know, okay. but it's still there. But they got they got really good treatments to let people yeah, live a long do. time now. And, and, that, and that's the thing, man. I don't think we talk enough about it. You know, I think people sometimes, these you know, but these young kids, they think so much in the moment, man. I say, hey, man, you don't know that because when you sleep with somebody, you sleeping with the person they slept with and the person that that person slept with. I, I'm going to tell you what really changed me, man, what really when I was a kid, what really freaked me out, man. I saw a poster when I was taking the physical. It had a picture of a, well, like a little symbol of a man. Yeah. And it said when you sleep with somebody and it showed how it, like quantify. And I thought about that, man. I said, man, that's some crazy stuff. And then... Magic Johnson announced he had it. I was, you know, but then when Easy announced that he had it, and they said he was in the hospital dying, I said, man, it it's for real. It's, it's for real. It ain't worth it. That's because well, you got motherfuckers out there that have it and feel fucked up by having it, and then they don't want to tell you. They just fucking yeah, spreading mm -hmm. it like on the bike set. You know, cats come out the penitentiary, juggling other guys, man, and come on right. hitting that girl. Even there. You know, when when I was in the penitentiary, 
this 86 through 88, motherfuckers was getting rolled up out of there, getting sent down to Chino, Mm -hmm. getting out, come home, straight to your girl. No, No, that ain't cool. So those cats that was on the DL spread it more than the chicks that was on the street. You feel me? Did nobody want to tell nobody they had it because they knew people weren't going to fuck with them. You know, or was scared to fuck with them. So it just it just trickled to everything. The motorcycle set, the car clubs, all that shit. And those chicks from the bike set went to the motorcycle club. Now they got it and they, they fucking and hitting the switches and all that <laughs> shit. So a lot of cats caught that shit. But today it's just like COVID. It's just so fucking what you call them now. Every it's normal. Yeah, you know. Nobody want to talk about it. You know what the thing is? We have to be real careful, man. Just because people think, especially these kids, man, because they didn't grow up in that area. You know, it hit us. We saw it right up in front. That yeah. shit scared the hell out of me. It actually changed me from being a person. I, I've been married now, man, for thirty years. Okay, congratulations. I've been with I've been with the same woman since I was eighteen. Congratulations. And I believe it's because of the the, the whole age hey, stuff. Yeah, that stuff right. scared the hell out of me. I didn't want I didn't want to go out and have a whole bunch of promiscuous with two of yeah, you to meet. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't gonna be doing it. It scared me. But these kids now, they don't think about that. You know what I'm saying? Um, no, like I say, the youth is living young, wild, and free. The song is out, living young, right. wild, and it's. I understand it. That's why I tell them I understand. I'm the truth for the youth. I once was a youth, young fella. I jumped ship from my mother. She wanted to move back to. Uh, we live in Chicago. She wanted to move back to New Orleans. I said, No, Mom, staying in Chicago, and then I wind up going to New York. I'm Did, 18 years old. I know I don't want. To. I got to. I got. Mom got to cut loose right here. I didn't want it, but it came to that. Listen to this, man. This ain't a recent. This is in 2020. 1.5 million people became newly infected with HIV in 2020. 680,000 people died from AIDS-related illnesses in 2020. 79.3 million people have become infected with HIV since the start of this epidemic. That's a lot of people, though. Now, why you would stop talking about that the virus is still, that the AIDS is still out there? Because I ain't heard no conversation on it in about 10 years. That's a lot of, that's a lot of new in fact, James. That why, qualifies to me as an epidemic still. You know, it you is. got 1.5 million people getting some. But just like you say, they're not, they not televising it and talking it, about it like they used to. I haven't heard a voice spoken about AIDS in over 10 years. That's a long time not to hear about it. And this is the first time I'm hearing about it with us talking about it. Yeah, and that's why I said because, see, I actually look, I, I didn't look at you in a bad light before. I didn't. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I don't judge nobody. Yeah. in my place to judge nobody. But what you doing was actually smart. Yeah. You know, that term, the flat backers and stuff like that. And, and, and what you doing is you just executing game. Yeah. You just executing game. Game. Ism, you know? Yeah. So, but you did it in a way to where you probably survived as long as you have because usually when you talk to like pimps, I'm talking about dudes that really was straight stumped pimp. down. Yeah, straight into the down. Game. Didn't, didn't have no other backbone to execute. They usually got horror stories about it. They talk about, you know what I'm saying? They got they got some they went through some things. It That's come with, it, it come story, with horror story. They say it's a different level for everybody. Everybody had their own platform. How they execute they women and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's different levels for how how he get out. The next cat gonna get out totally different. He got a he got a nine inch piece of water hose whooping the shit out of one. Yeah. Cause mm-hmm. she didn't come back right. Yeah. And then make her get back out there fucked up black out a whole nine. Yeah. And she ain't gonna come back in until that paper right. So it's just different levels to the game. And that way ain't even supposed to be executed. Right. That move he did ain't pulled home. You ain't gonna you don't have a long run coming. A pulled I got a longer run coming, but home. That frog down gonna be on for the rest of your life and that's all you gonna do to her. Right. That's all you gonna do to her. Now let me give you this COVID topic, man. When the first time you heard about COVID? COVID, um, 
I heard about COVID the first time. We actually used to record at this spot um, up in Hollywood Hills. Okay. And I remember um, they had shut the studio down. Remember when the studio stuff got shut down? What year we talking? We talking, um, this had to 2018. be. 2018. 2018, yeah. The 20, beginning of 19, yeah. Yeah, the beginning of 19. Okay. And so it was kind of like stuff got shut down. Everybody was standing inside, you know what I mean? Okay. I was scared to death. I didn't know what the hell was going to happen. Well, the world got shut down in 2020 because I was at the Mardi Gras. And right after the Mardi Gras in February, the NBA was playing. Right. They shut the NBA no, down. No, this was 2020, James. I'm sorry to shut you up, but you're right. It was, it was 2020. We was that coming was out of years ago. We, yeah, we was coming out of 2019, coming into 2020. 2019. Is it 2022 now? Okay, so I'm time a, fly like a motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so I'm gonna tell you my scenario. I had been to Asia like five times. Nothing have ever happened to me. You know, they supposed to say you supposed to get a quarantine, and they weren't even executing it. I'm straight jumping flights, landing in foreign countries, and boom, moving around. Nothing happened to me. 2019, I go to the Philippines, flew out of LAX, flew to the Philippines in November, 2019. I get sick, but I'm taking the sickness to be a regular cold because I'm coughing and sore throat that I'm always going through in America. This one, this 2019, this one went into a gagging. So I had to tell the people in the Philippines, man, refer me to a private doctor because this here cold should have been left. And I'm going on like the fourth week, but I'm still doing home remedies. Man, when the lady took me in to see the doctor, the lady put the test on my chest. She declared me to have an upper respiratory infection. I went back to my room and I Googled it. That's in the family of pneumonia, the flu, and deaf. Now, had I went on the fifth week? Wouldn't have made it. Wouldn't have made it. Is it not that they put you in the hospital? No. She only gave me some uh, mucus pill to, you know, take that uh, mucus off my lungs. I'm talking about I was gagging. And I know something was wrong with me, but this happened from my entering into Asia. Mm. Now, then what happened? They screaming coronavirus now. But when they screamed it, it was in 2020 at the Mardi Gras. When I Googled what coronavirus was, what's in there? Upper respiratory infection. Mm -hmm. That lady would have declared me a coronavirus patient, but the word was not out yet. Mm -hmm. So she gave me the truth. So I tell everybody, coronavirus is not an illness. What was the illness? Was it pneumonia? Was it a respiratory infection? Was it respiratory infection? See, the thing about COVID, though, Rodney, is it hits different people differently. When I have it, when I but had COVID it. COVID is not an illness. What is the illness? The lady was able to tell the truth because she didn't have the word to tell the person you had COVID. When I caught COVID here in America and I went to the doctor, they say, yeah, you had COVID. Didn't send me home with nothing. Yeah, they don't have nothing they can give you. Um, so... Unless you got an upper respiratory infection uh, with it, that's they can give you something to relieve it a little that, bit, but they can't. And really that's do that breather. That's but that at that breather. time, it was new though. When yeah. it first came out, they didn't know what the hell to do with well, it. Well, you know, actually, we've had different little. Um, oh, but listen, be, but before you go on, so when Trump told the world that it came out of China, mm -hmm. I'm able to say Trump was right because I caught a connected flight from L.A. to uh, uh, Beijing. And while sitting in the airport, that's why I had probably caught it. Because by the time I landed in uh, the Philippines, I took sick. But not knowing that that transition took place at that time. How long did you stay sick? About a whole month in the Philippines. God, so you had it twice? And I had it four times already. You had COVID four times? Like three in America and one in Asia. God, man, we should make your ass put a mask on when you I'm came up with that. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, when you got the symptoms and everything, that's when you know you got it. The scratchy mm -hmm. throat, the runny nose, the mm -hmm. coughing. So when I'm not going through none of that, I know I'm all right. 
Right. But I know when I got it because that it's it starts in the in the throat. Yeah, you, you know what? Because actually, we were supposed to do this interview a couple months ago. Right. And you was telling me that you wasn't feeling it right and didn't want to go around nobody. You know. Right. And so you he was, had, had it too. Yeah. yeah. I had it. Um. When I had it though, and I got asthma, so I just knew. That's why I was scared of it. I said, if I catch it, I'm gonna do this. But when I caught it, I couldn't do nothing but go to sleep. Like, I couldn't wake up. I would wake up for, like, five or ten minutes. Right. And next thing you know, I'm just like, it was just like my body was in shutdown mode. Just a week. And see, they had just had, it. they bless your heart, and they just had the players ball in San Diego. And I couldn't even go because I just got over the fourth time of it where my throat was itchy, and I knew we was going to all be in a room breathing on one another. And I said, no, I can't, I can't go up in that joint like this thing attacking me too many times on two different and many different areas, but but I know that's why I say I know COVID is not it. It's the symptom that you get the scratchy throat, the four right times. nose. It's a hit me you see four me? Times. I'm, I'm getting the um, hand sanitizer and stuff now. Hit me four times. Man. Four times. Hit me four times. Man. That's I'm crazy. blessed because I ain't never had it. You know, yeah. you you blessed, bro. Yeah. I got the vaccine. I know a lot of people don't. I ain't going to go too much into that because I think people got their choices of what they want to well, do. that's a choice thing because I ain't got it yet, and I refuse to get it because I'm not going to subject myself to taking something y'all have no medical research on. You just threw it out there, and those that was unlearned went after it. I got a buddy down in Atlanta right now. He said, man, I took the shot two times. Man, I'm still catching this thing. That's why I'm not back in Asia now because I got to take the shot to be able to travel again. So right. I'm holding out because I know this was a political move based on what I don't know, but it was a political move. How you shut the whole world down? Right. Now let me, you know what, but speaking of that. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why they shut it down. Trump was not having it that China was extorting us for the import and export. Right. When Trump got in there and saw the menu, China said, hey, man, you don't, man, we ain't finna cut our prices. They released the virus. Because Trump was not a lame. All the other presidents was buying in. Right. Trump was not buying in. So what China do? Chemical warfare. That's my opinion. Because Trump was going at them folks in China. No, man, we ain't paying that. You trying to extort me, man? Like, mm. I don't know how to play the game, too. Nigga, I got buildings all throughout America. Man, cut them price, huh? That's deep. I put my, put my life on that. Trump seen the menu. Man, I'm not paying that, man. Well, Trump, you know, we can shut the world down. Everybody shop with China. Right, they damn sure do. And we ain't going to lose out when we in shutdown. And we were sacrificing our own people. And when we get back up and running, we're going to still be powerful. Yeah, for right. real. So, man, we really appreciate you coming up I, here. Let today. me ask you this. Your your jury, your your chain and your ring. Yeah. That's that. Customized, man. Got the whole world in my hand. Rody Mac on top of the world. That's what it meant. And I'm talking about other folks. You know, everybody... I rock the globe, the world is mine. Right. Well, I'm really spanning the globe, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm spanning the globe, man. Like, for real, man. Everybody say they're international, but the only place they're going is from Natown to the next town in the USA. That's not international, home, that's interstate. Right. Uh, you know, before, I've been meant to speak to you about that. Yeah, before I, before I go, I want to ask you this. What's the grimiest city you've been to in the United States? Well, what I'm doing, man, I'm not even looking. I know how to stay away from grime activity because I know prime marketing place in any city I go in mm -hmm. is the downtown. You ain't finna see no grimy activity in no downtown in no city in America. Well, do you got other pimp partners that don't, you know, been to other places? Yeah, they go to other places, got to go in them ghettos because your game required you to go into them areas. Like, like, but you knowing about that, what would you say the most grimy area was? Well, shit, they can come through Figaro. They can go up on uh, Hunts Point. They can go over to Queen Bird and uh, uh, Queen Bridge in uh, New York. They go on the south side of Chicago. 
I can't sit on these tracks, man. You hear some dangerous spots? You knew that because um, Prospect in Cleveland was grimy. Yeah. I, couldn't, I can't sit on the tracks, man. I need some bright lights, man. Need this game to light up like the Tokyo, man. Shinjuku. A lot of y'all ain't ready to pronounce that, but that's the downtown of uh, Tokyo. Shinjuku. International. Now, where can people find you at, bro? Man, well, they can Google Rody Mac. And they're going to see the whole squad. But on Instagram, I'm Rody Mac MacMan. You need live and living color, man, hanging out with all the stars. You need. There we go. I was just with uh your man Benny Siegel yesterday, man. I caught him out on the blade. That's why I got this legend on my head, man. Because <laughs> I am a street star legend. I don't need all that Hollywood glam and all that fraud behavior. The gutter of the concrete is still being executed, man. By Benny one Siegel. of the flies cats in the game. Over 40 years all across America. That's legendary. That's a long time, man. Still looking young, healthy, medical problems at a zero, vegetarian, don't eat poison meat no more, you know. See, that's probably why you're catching that COVID, though, man. You got to have that, that, that pork in there, man, to no, fight them things, man. No. <laughs> you got to have that pork, man, and that cow, that beef. Well, the pork is what's gonna give you cancer and everything. No, I, I don't mess with pork either, man. I'm just messing with <clears> you with that. But but we go go ahead, man, and we go shut this down, man. I really appreciate you coming on, man. We got some other stuff to talk about. Yeah, right. James. Yeah, James. Still, we up in here, man, with Gangster Chronicle, man. Right. Got the TV. We did it, Jack. That's it, right there. And we out of here. Peace.